Do you recall from your research how the Surrealists used the exquisite corpse drawing to generate a collaborative composition? Folding the paper into thirds, an artist would draw on the first third, then fold the drawing so that only a tiny portion of it was visible to the next artist, who would extend the lines into the second third of the drawing, and so on until the drawing would unfold to reveal a figure. The drawings are fun and surprising but the folds do take a bit of the surprise away. They create a somewhat predictable boundary between artists and their drawing styles. In other words, it's often too easy to tell where one artist stopped and another started. In a digital version of the corpse, our masking technique is not limited by the physicality of paper, so the boundaries are more fluid, allowing the compositions to potentially become more unified. So let's get started on making the equivalent of the folds in the paper and set up layers and a mask for the first round of the corpse. In your historical states of the XCorpse files, you have a file named UU, XCorpse, 300, 8x9.tif. Remember there are underscores wherever there are spaces in good file naming convention. You won't hear me read them aloud in this demo. This is an uncompressed, color-corrected version of your scanogram that will share a common resolution and image format with your colleagues' files. Download a copy of this to your desktop from your archive, or make a copy of the file if it's already on your desktop, and change the name simply to uu.tif, where uu is the randomly assigned number you've been given for the collaboration order. Open the file in Photoshop, flatten any layers if present, then unlock the background layer by double-clicking on it. Rename this layer A. Next, click on the small four-line icon at the upper right-hand corner of the layer palette to open the drop-out menu and select New Layer, to create three additional layers named B, C, and X. Reorder the layers to read C, B, A, and X from top to bottom. Remember you do this by clicking on a layer outside of its name or icon, then holding and dragging to reposition it. With X layer selected, go to Menu, Edit, Fill, and in the dialog box select Black for content. Turn Layer A off to see the black fill applied to X, then turn A back on. With Layer A active, apply a layer mask to A. To do this, look at the bottom of the layer palette, hover your cursor over the icon that looks like a square donut and you'll see a balloon help label for Add Layer Mask. Click on this icon. The layer mask appears as a white rectangle with four white brackets around it, and there's a small chain icon between the mask and the icon for the image. Click the chain icon to toggle it on and off. The link between the content and the mask becomes active when the chain appears. Now click back and forth between the image and the mask. The white brackets highlight which one is active. Click on the mask to make it active. We are going to apply a black and white gradient to the mask to reveal only a small area of the image in layer A. Start by selecting the Gradient tool from the toolbar. It's about halfway down. With the tool selected, look at the Options bar and you'll see a default black and white gradient defined. Click on the adjacent arrow and you'll see other gradient definitions. Don't change the gradient from black and white, just know this is available. Next to the Gradient Picker are five icons to choose gradient styles, Linear, Radial, Angle, Reflected, and Diamond. Of these, Radial, Reflected, or diamond may be the most useful for our task, which is to hide about 90% of the image content in layer A. The others, not so useful. They just don't hide enough. In my sample, I'll play with just one, the radial gradient, but you should feel free to experiment. With radial selected, I'll set the mode for normal, the opacity at 100%, and, with a white to black gradient used, I'll check reverse on. When we click hold and drag to create a gradient in the layer mask, you'll see a line defining the extent of the influence of the gradient, which for a radial will be the radius of the gradient. Release the cursor and the gradient is created. You can keep redefining this gradient until you generate a mysterious, ambiguous fragment of an image, something that could be interpreted visually in any number of ways. When done, lock layers C, A, and X by using the lock layer function in the palette dropout menu. There's a final step to make sure the full image remains a mystery. Notice a small icon of the full image in the layer's palette, which sort of gives the game away. So right-click inside the layer palette anywhere layer is not present, and select No Thumbnails from the dropout contextual menu options. Now, the only thing the next collaborating artist can see is an icon of a brush, indicating that there is some image content, and an icon of a layer mask. Keep all these layers on, and archive the final uu.tif file in your cloud-based folder, named uu, xcorps, share. Then, 
Copy the file to the exquisite corpse share folder link at your learning management system main page by the second share deadline. Part 1 is done with this step.